Good evening, good evening everyone. How are you tonight? Let me check my equipment and make sure that we are on, on both Facebook and YouTube. I think we are. So I have YouTube comments. If someone wants to comment on Facebook, let me know if you can see and hear me. That would be great. Hope everyone's doing well. Okay, I see comments. Awesome. Hi, Patty and Patricia. Awesome. Okay. All right, so tonight what I did was I pre-recorded a video uh, to make sure I didn't get off topic because sometimes I don't finish things when I start them. So I'm going to give it just a few minutes. And if you have any questions or things that you want to see in future live broadcast, type them in the comments or you can send me an email. You can send me a message on Facebook. All of those will work. Um, and I'll go back through the comments and look. And I will announce the winners from last week um, as soon as we get a few people on. Okay. All right. So, hi, Ann, Barbie, Christine, Pat, Bobby, Eddie. Okay. We've got quite a group. And there's Miss Donna Jansen. Jeannie. Awesome. I'm glad you made it. All right. So, I'm going to um, go over to my other camera. And there we go. All right. So, if you didn't see my post, I did put together... Um, a two-page uh, blog that shows you fired. I did not get this piece glazed, uh, just trying to get it ready for the live. So this is the piece as I painted it. This is the piece after it was fired to bisque. All of your colors, brushes, and everything are there. And then I did give you a line drawing PDF. That is on the blog on my website, coloresforearth.com. It's listed at the bottom there. Just go to the blog and type it, or go to... Um, the search bar and just type in butterfly and it'll pop up. Okay. Hey Barb. Hey Linda. Thanks for joining Vicki Tisa. Okay. So that's out there for you. You can download it. I've given you the colors. If you've already downloaded it, you may want to write on the pattern, like what colors go with what I did not do that because the video is here. So you should be able to uh, do that. So last week, every week what I've started to do, Hey Gail is, um, if you like, share the video. If you share from YouTube, make sure you tag me or even when you share on Facebook and your name goes into a drawing to win either uh, what I've painted or it could be a packet. Uh, who knows what it'll be, okay? So keep that in mind. So last week we were giving away a packet and a mug. So Miss Gail Lee... I believe you do ceramics, is that correct? If not, let me know, or if you already have this packet. So this is the Sunflower Tortilla Warmer. It's done with color concentrates. I did it as a Majelica, meaning I painted on top of our Potter Stone Buff, which is a speckled matte, and you're able to actually bake in that piece if you have the Potter Stone Buff on it. Now this is earthenware. It does not go to cone five, cone six, if you're mid-range okay so let me know and make sure you message me with your uh, shipping information so that i can send that to you okay all right the other winner of and i don't have this finished i literally just finished the background right before the live um so this was one of the cups that we were doing last week signed it everything so now i have to glaze it miss donna jansen you are the winner of this mug so if I don't have I don't remember if I have your address so be sure and message me that information it'll take me a few days uh, to get it glazed and fired and all that but you are the winner of that mug and then I decided to go ahead and give away so I'm giving two mugs away the um, purple and yellow one that we did and I added some comma strokes and some hat pin strokes on it and I'm going to talk about hat pin strokes tonight Miss Lucy Mott is the winner of this mug. So I need your shipping address, so be sure and message me you all your information, okay? And these are just some of the little um, jewelry pieces that I did on glass. I posted those just a little while ago. Um, this is with the new prismatic 
uh, textured sand technique. I can't show you the other piece because it's back in the kiln, uh, but I will post it when I get everything finished, okay? Welcome, welcome everyone that just jumped on. Uh, I see Robin is on, Ann Parcher, Dorothy, and then we've got Patricia on Facebook. We've got quite a few people. Evelyn, Faye, hey Faye, uh, Stacy, Shannon, a whole bunch of you. Okay, so congratulations to the winners, and just don't forget to message me with your address, okay? So the blog has the two-page PDF, okay, pattern, and colors that I use the color sheets. So here's your actual tile. So this has been bisfired and then I have to glaze it. And you know what? I'm going to give this away next week. So like, share, comment. And if you like and share, make sure you tag me and you could be the winner of this guy. And then I'll give away a free uh, downloadable technique sheet also. So um, depending on if you're glass or ceramic, you can choose um, any of them that are like 1250 or below. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Hopefully shared. Okay. Thank you, Bridget. Um, yeah, just you can put it in the comment that you did. And then, like I said, if you tag me, I'll be able to see that also. Okay. All right. I'm going to get uh, go ahead and go to the video. Let's hope everything works on this. I've only done this one other time. So I am... Um, Hoping it will work. Here we go. Okay, okay. I, I am working on earthenware green This is just an 8 by 8 tile. tile. Um, this, this is in, in, in June, June of 2023. 20, 20, and this looks have changed. So, so a, lot a lot of the wear turns out more yellow than it is really really white. white. So what I'm going to use is two coats of our Color Stroke 602 white. I'm using a soft fan brush, always wet that brush. And then actually keep some water in the brush and kind of thin down your first coat so that it absorbs into the wear. Um, anytime I do, even on bisque, I will do the same thing. I will just grab some water and just thin that down. It just makes it bond with the wear. Okay, and two coats should be fine. If you were on a darker clay body, then you might have to put more than that. Okay, so I've got more than enough out here, uh, and I've got a towel underneath me just as a cushion so that if I bump the piece at least i've got a little bit of give and this was actually a dud tile um, so i'm using it for a sample had some pouring issues always shake your colors uh, before you start to use them that'll help liquefy them thin them down a little bit Anytime you're painting, you always try to use um, the largest brush possible in the area. If you didn't have a fan, you had a mop brush, you could even use the, um, like the large sumi. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly put another coat on there just to make sure it's nice and even. Okay. And because it's bone dry, um, it really absorbs the product quickly. Okay. So we'll let that dry. And then we're going to transfer a pattern onto it. Okay. Um, you can take your finger and kind of finger sand 
if you see a hair, roll it out, or if you see any bumps uh, where the, you have a thicker application of the product, then just kind of finger sand it off to make your nice smooth surface to do your work on. Okay, so I have some butterflies here that I've drawn and then I've got just an inexpensive tissue paper. Cheaper the better. And you can trace over your pattern. with a pencil, and then I will show you how to transfer it to the wear. And I've just put a variety of Uh, styles of butterflies here. You may like one better than another. It gives you some different ones to play with. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can do a butterfly. Oops. Um, you can do it with brush strokes or you can just zoom and shade. So there's a couple of different ways you can accomplish them. And it's all about um, how you load the brush if you're going to do strokes. Um, the direction that you pull them will make a difference. So there's a couple of different factors involved. So hopefully these will give you some ideas about what you can do. And I'm just very quickly tracing this, not being really picky, just getting the gist of where I want, just of the pattern. Now we don't have enough room, I don't think. No, see that one will not go on there. So we've just got these guys. And there will be a pattern on the blog if you want to uh, print that out, the PDF. Okay, so since this is greenware, uh, we can use a Sharpie because we're not going to trap the glaze and the color um, between the wear and the glaze because the green will have to be fired. Again, this is earthenware. Um, so I'm going to fire it to 04, which will burn the marker off. And then you can come back and add your cheat codes to clear. Uh, if you're doing this on um, mid-range, cone 5, cone 6, you could just put it on and then you can put your clear over it. If you're going to do that, I haven't tested it, but I would go to the watercolor marker instead of the Sharpie, since you are trapping it between the two. And I like the Stadler Tri Plus Fine Liners. They have like a Sharpie point to them and they work really nicely. And that's what I use on Bisque, 04 Bisque. I don't use the Sharpie unless it's greenware or my Olica work, which would be, and my Sharpie is really bad, um, my Olica is on top of a non-moving glaze. That way, in other words, it's on top, you're not trapping it. It's when you trap the glaze and what's underneath it that the Sharpie tends to interfere with that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, since you are, or since I am on greenware, just be very careful how hard you press. See how nicely that comes out? Because it could gouge the wear. So you don't want to press too hard. You also want to go slow enough that the marker 
has the ability to bleed through. It doesn't have to be an absolute solid line as long as it's just a guide. So like on this one we have uh, a back wing, you can't see all of it, and then you get, so it's like a side view. And this is just a smaller one with the same sort of thing. So this goes pretty quick. Just keep checking to make sure what you're doing is coming through. Because you sure don't want to trace it all and then lift it up and you have nothing. That's happened before. Especially, uh, you could use clay carbon and if you use in clay carbon and you don't check which side you need to uh, have upside down or right side up and you trace it and you've got the wrong side up then you're going to be disappointed so clay carbon is like um, it's like a two-part invoice with no it's like a carbonless invoice you have in like some of your invoice books they do sell clay carbon you should store it in a cool dry place and I'll have to bring some of that on so you can see it in case you're not familiar with it you can get it at a paper supply place um, some of your um, ceramic suppliers may have it. I usually buy it by the rain from a paper and it'll last you forever unless you just teach a lot or do a lot. Okay. And there we go. There's our pattern. We can add something to that later if we want to add, um, you know, like a background. We can do that. Okay, I'm going to wipe out the white in case I want to use that in the middle there. All right. So, um, brush strokes are easier if they're done with the color concentrates just because it's a thinner product can you use color strokes absolutely you can use them um, but you just they're thicker so you could like base coat an area which we can do that um, let's say we want one of these uh, with a lavender background okay so orchid bloom is 638 color stroke 638 the new color stroke bottles look like this the old ones are like this. That's the only difference. During uh, COVID, we weren't able to get our uh, supplier uh, the bottles. So therefore, we had to change. So let's, I shook that up. Always shake well. Always dampen your brush. Blot out the moisture. And I'm just going to, I don't know, let's pick this larger one here. And I've got the small Sumi brush. And I'm going to go right over that pattern because we can always put it back on. So long fluid strokes coming this particular time. I'm coming from the outside in. So that gives me about two coats. I'm not worried if I get it onto my body of the butterfly because that's going to be dark. It's going to be black. So 
album cover is. So keep that in mind as you're doing things. Kind of have a plan of where you're going. Okay, I may not want it like right here where I got outside zone to where it goes. Um, you can do that because you've got that base coat on. You can do it on the greenware too, but because you got the base coat, it makes a little bit of a difference. All right, so then let's go with, um, what color do I want in there? We can go 637, which is bright purple, a little bit darker. Again, shake well. All of our products are in a gel base. They're in a thixotropic base, which means they thicken the more you shake, stir, agitate, they liquefy. So keep that in mind. So you may think you're out of product and you start shaking it and you've got more in there than you believe or thought you had. I put out way too much color. The Sumi brushes are great for base coating, which is what we're doing here. Um, they're nice and soft. They hold a lot of product. You're going to see less brush strokes. Turn your piece as you're working. You don't want to work against yourself. You want to make it nice and easy for what you're doing. So we're going to put a couple of coats on there. Smooth it out. Okay. Once again, if you uh, didn't want it on the body, you can rinse your brush and you can shimmy and push that color back where it goes. Tell it to get back inside the fence and you've cleaned it off your body. Just as simple as that because it's in that gel base. Okay. All right. So that one we're going to let dry. And I'm going to grab a square shader. Let's see what size I want. You could have put a background on here, like I said, if you wanted to. Um, ooh, we might even use the trio brush. That could make some nice pattern. Let's leave that one out. Um, I've got the number 8, 5200, number 8. 5200s are the square shaders, or flats, some people call them, because they're pinched in the ferrule to a flat shape. Some people call them because they are pinched in the ferrule to a flat shape and and if you're not sure of something you can dampen that brush and you could come in here and just do some strokes and just get a feel for it with the water it, it's not going to hurt it as long as the water is clean you can do that okay so keep that in mind as a um, practice run so to speak Okay, let's do, um, what color do I want on these? I did not have a plan, can you tell, when I started this, because I have all my colors just sitting here, and I can grab them. Okay, you know me, I like um, the Ceruleans, so I'm gonna grab 50 and 52, light Cerulean and deep Cerulean. Once again, shake really well. Don't use much of the dark color. 
So if we're going to pull this, even though that's got a rounded shape, we can make it squared off. That's not a problem. I generally will load with my light color. And let me back the camera up so you can, or I can go to, let's do palette and overhead. And then we got to move some bottles. I was doing a lot of painting earlier. All right, now you can see that. Okay. okay, so I'm going to fully load in the light cerulean, right into the brush towards me, and I'm going to corner load in the deep cerulean. Okay, so you can see it here. You're going to blend it on the palette quickly, flip it over, dark next to dark, blend it again. I like to load twice the first time I start. Okay, now I'm going to keep the dark side down, meaning towards the bottom, and I'm going to have to hold this up so that you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to just take a stroke and press down, pull, pull, slightly turn it, and lift. So there's a back wing. You can go right back in here, fully load, check your writing of the brush, corner. Remember that anytime you load two colors on a brush, you do want to make sure that both colors are the same consistency so that you get a nice even load on your brush. All right, so I'm going to go down again with the color. Let me get it over here where you can see it. So I'm going to press down, pull, 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 and lift as you get to the body. Corner, or you can fully load, and then corner. And if you don't like something you do, you can always take it off and do it again. I'm going to slightly turn the brush so that I'm coming off at an angle, so that I stay within my space of my wing. Down with the dart, press, and just pull it in. So there's a little guy. So I'm just cornering and cornering, cornering with both colors. Um, you could turn it around like this and you could start at the bottom and come in if that's easier. And then they can overlap you see that? I'm just going to pick up what's on the palette there. I'm going to do that stroke again. I lifted a little too soon. So I think coming from the bottom is probably better. You can see and you can overlap them and don't have to worry about it. So every layer you put on it just makes it darker. That's all. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to pull that one in again. And pull that one in. And pull that one in. Okay. So that's kind of pretty and we can add detail on top of it. Once again, if you don't want that on the body, you can take a clean brush and you can just softly, with just barely a damp brush, I took most of the moisture out of it and you can just push it back. Okay, so there's another way that you can do that and you could do it on the, the large ones. Uh, coming in from the sides. Depending on the size of the butterfly, you would just change uh, the size of the brush. So let's go over here on this one with the same colors, but let's use uh, the round brush. And where's my... Okay, so this is the number four, the 2004 KB Kalinske Blend. Always dampen your brush, blot on paper towel, 
I'm going to fully load with the light blue. I'm going to tip into the dark. And I'm going to press, pull, lift, 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 lift as you get to the body. Whoops, I was off the camera. Let's do that again on the next stroke. So the next one beside it, press, pull, lift to the body. A little bit more of the lighter blue, tip into the dark. Remember what goes on the brush last, which is the dark, comes off first, and that's what's going to uh, drag through or variegate. So determine, usually your light color is better to put on first and then your dark last, but that doesn't mean that you have to go that way at all. So press, pull, and lift. Remember, a brush stroke is a combination of color, pressure, and motion. So the amount of pressure I put down will determine the size of the stroke. The color, I'm double loading. So both colors have to be the same consistency. Usually darker colors are thicker and you may have to add a drop of water. And then uh, the motion is what direction I pull that stroke. So it determines which way it goes. These are pretty much just coming straight into the body. Pull and lift. Okay, a little bit on the tip. Press, pull and lift. Reload each color as you need it. Always load that dark one though, because remember it's coming off first, so it needs to go back on the brush. Fully load, tip. Press, pull, pull, lift, lift, lift. Fully load, tip. Press, pull, and lift. And did you notice, I always paint larger than my pattern, first of all. Um, the pattern is a guide. It's a guide. Don't feel extremely um, restricted, okay? It's just to keep your, your eye and your mind in the direction that you're going and how much space that you have to do what you need to do, okay? So I've got a short one here. I just re-tipped in the dark. We'll add it here. I don't like the way that one looked. Press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. Okay, so now you have same blue colors, one with the square shader, one with the round. Kind of cool. Now, let's say that on this guy over here, we wanted to um, shade, just doing a shading, which can either be done with the square shader and you can float color, or you can actually um, sumi shade with the sumi brushes if that's all you've got. I don't know that I would do this guy with the sumi brush. You could, but it's so flimsy. It doesn't have the spring that the Kalinskis do where they come back to that point. So it's going to be more of a challenge with this one. So just keep that in mind as you're um, looking for different choices. Okay, so I'm going to pick up 122 lemon peel. And I'm going to sumi shade it on the outside edges of this one. And when I say sumi shade, if you're new to me and you haven't watch me do this. I'm trying to get my water bowl so you can see it. Um, I'm going to go back to just the overhead though so that we've got more room here. All right, me and my dirty water bowl here. I usually um, rinse first over here, get most of my color off, and then I rinse in that one that's more clean. I have an area back at the back that's clean. Okay. All right, and let me show you the palette. So I'm going to water load. So I dipped in my clean water back here, and I'm going to drag, drag, drag multiple times, and I'm turning the brush so that I get a point. But I'm dragging off most of that color, okay? So that's what I'm going to do every time. And I'm going to tip fairly generously into the yellow. 
and I'm going to tuck this yellow on the outside. I usually start in the center of the area, which would be right here in the middle of that wing. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left. Back and forth. I've got enough water that I can add some more color and I can walk it back towards the center. Do you see how it's coming in? And I fuss with it. I sit here and I fiddle and I play and fuss with it until I get something I like. Okay, so don't expect to just sit it down there, walk it one way, walk it the other, and you're done. You need to have a nice blended, faded, so it should be dark on the outside and fade to water or nothing towards the center or back where the top of the bristles are. Okay, so I'm going to turn it around and do the same water load, drag off, drag off, tip into my yellow, tuck my yellow over here, sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left. I'm going to grab a little bit more color, do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to walk it back down the petal. Now, I had a little drop of yellow that kind of splattered, so I just cleaned my brush. But can you see how it just fades from dark to light? That's what you're wanting. Okay. All right. Um, then we're going to use an orange on the bottom. And the orange is 116 Florida orange. And we're going to do the same thing along the outside. So it's going to be lighter on the outside, darker towards the body where it's gathered. Okay, so sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left, grab a little bit more color. So it's like you're putting two coats on almost. And then you determine how far back, and I've got it tilted so it's kind of moving more than I wanted to. But because you've got the white underneath there, that's like what I call my insurance coat. And it allows me to manipulate and move that color around until I get it like I want it. See, I can even push that back in. I had a little, little orange uh, splatter. Water load, drag off to a point. If you feel like you're getting too much water, you can blot on a paper towel. Just really quickly. Don't hold the brush down there very long. Water's your friend. Set it down, set it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right, walk it to the left. So if you start in the middle, you'll get a nice even coat across that area. Because if you would start over here on the end and go across, you have less in your brush time you get over here. And you've got a dark side and a light side. So if you start in the middle and you disperse it evenly, then it'll look more even. Okay. So then towards, I'm not liking that a little bit, so I'm just going to take a damp brush and just kind of repeat that padding motion. And we're going to do more to it, so I'm not real worried about it. Okay, so now I'm going to do the water load semi shade. Same thing, drag off, and this time, and I know I've got too much water on there, I'm going to blot it. I'm going to tip and go to the center and walk it back this time. Now, sometimes if you feel like it's pulling off what you're putting on, you can take and add the yellow to your brush then tip into your orange and tuck your orange in and then you're depositing yellow and orange at the same time okay instead of leaving it more uh, white which is our base coat in the middle and i've got it really wet so i've got to be careful because it's going to lift off if i don't let it set i just grabbed more orange and I'm going to tuck it in and it makes a difference which direction your brush is pointed because the yellow is on 
the top side of my brush, it's fully loaded in there. So I wouldn't want to go this way because I would have an orange line. I'm going to reload my brush and bring it back. Usually the first, um, and if you have a hard time with it on Greenware, you shouldn't. But if you were on um, this and you had a hard time with it sticking, you could actually put a little bit of the gloss medium into your colors and that would give it more stick, sticky stuff. Okay. Now, this one is faded back more than that one, so I'm going to redo that one. I'm going to drag off to a point, gently blot, pick up some of my orange, and just go back over that and let it come back a little further. Okay. All right, then I'm going to leave that one alone. So... If we wanted to do the same colors once again with um, the round brush or the square, um, let's do a smaller square. This is uh, the number eight. This happens to be the 2200 series, which is the Taclon. And I'm going to fully load with the yellow writing in the brush towards me, corner in the orange, and I'm going to blend that on my palette just like I did the blue, recorner the orange. Now the tack one is not going to hold as much color as the sables hold, okay, sables are natural, but if I wanted to do this guy here, corner, corner in my two colors, I'm putting the orange down, press, and pull. So two strokes, whoops, and I'm off camera. Sorry about that. Let's do the next wing over here. So I've got the square shader, press, pull, and lift. Reload both colors, corner, corner. Blend those colors. Press pull and lift. So just two strokes. Corner, corner. And by loading for each stroke, you're ensuring that you have the same color value across your piece. Press and come in. Eight square. You see on that one I made a little bit more of a point. Turn it around. I have not washed my brush. I'm just cornering each color. So press, pull, and lift. Corner, corner, blend. Orange down, press, pull, and lift. So those strokes are overlapping each other. And that just gives you more depth. Whoops, orange down. I just about did it and pull in. Raise the brush. And if you want it off of that body, you can just gently push it with a damp brush. Okay. So you can, if you only had a square and didn't have a round, you can get similar looks. And then just wait until we dress it up. Um, you'll see. Now I talked about trying the um, trio brush. The trio brush has three sides. So if you can see the barrel, let's see if I can put it where you can. It has a flat, a flat, and a flat. My hands have the greenware on it. That's what that chalky look is. So you've got three sides, okay? Let me just try something with water. It is a Taclon brush, so you have to um, be careful of that because it's not going to hold as much color. Press and lift. Ooh, that might be pretty. I kind of like that. Or do we want to go 
from the inside out and come to a point. I think the outside in is going to work better. So I'm going to grab red. I'm going to grab the 112 candy apple red. So with the trio brush, you got three sides. You can actually load three colors on it. I don't think that's what I'm going to do because uh, I don't want it to get. This is supposed to be simple, not complicated. Um, I'm going to put the orange on my brush, fully load, kind of shape it back to a point. Let me tilt this so you can see that better. And then I'm going to the top of it, I call it the top, I'm going to just kind of drag it in there so that it's along the top. Okay. And we're going to press it down, fan that out, and come to a point. Okay, I think I've still got, I'll add a little bit more orange. I'm going to be a little more generous with that red. Press, pull, and lift to a point. This makes great poinsettia petals, um, grass. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can use with it, create with it. Press, pull, and lift. So the more pressure I put down, the fatter that stroke is going to be. I can make really thin lines with this if I want, but I'm wanting it to. So there I didn't press down quite as hard. So I'm going to go grab some of the orange, lay the top of that in the red. I'm going to take just a little bit off. And then I'm going to do the center one first. So I'm going to come out past that pattern. And then I'm going to catch that one and catch that one. Pretty cool. So if I wanted to put another coat on, it would be stronger or you leave it and it's just softer look. I'm thinking that this one needed heavier red. So I'm just going to go back over that one more time just so you can see the difference. Okay. So you could achieve that with a point brown, absolutely. But if you're looking for something different, this is kind of a nice um, addition to your brush selection. It is tack on, so it doesn't hold the color like a sable. We wouldn't be able to afford it in the sable. We have two sizes. Um, I think we're running low on the large, but um, you can do multiple strokes and use the small one. And this one is the small. This is the 1750 trio brush t-r-i-o okay so now if we wanted to do we could use this trio brush to create that little section that we had in there on the pattern that would be kind of cool um, i'm thinking load with the purple and tip into um 40 Three sapphire, 143 sapphire blue. This one's really full and really thick. I don't want it to see how thick that is. So that one definitely needs water. So I'm going to go to my water bowl, just stick my handle in there and come over here and use that drop of water that's on there to thin it down. And add another one. I do that with the handle so that I don't waste my product. Because otherwise you're just putting it in the water and it's it's wasted. Okay. So I'm thinking I do it with water first. But if I go like that, or I can start from the outside and come in also. Okay, so let's do, now I'm using color strokes and color concentrate. Well, I can go back to color concentrates. 
um, let's do the 36, let me get mine out, 136 purple sage. thick also. So what are we going to do? We're going to add a drop of water and thin it down. Okay, so I'm going to pick up that purple sage 136 first on the trio and then I'm going to drag the top through there. So I've got blue and purple. And I'm going to start out here and then press, pull, and lift. That's kind of pretty. Kind of pretty. What do you guys think? So press, pull, and lift. And as you lift, so you're fanning out, so color, two colors pressure determines the width of that stroke and then the motion will take you to where you're going so you've got to have a plan where you're starting and where you're stopping okay all right so let's do this on the bottom wings also but we're going to add two strokes because it's a little bit larger so i'm going to come out here press pull and lift i'm going to reload and then i'm going to just pick up right beside that one and pull in. So now it's a fatter stroke or more rounded. So press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. Nice. There's all kinds of things you can do with the trio brush. Um, let me show you real quick. I can use the same colors. I pretend it's green. So if you were doing grass, I would turn the piece upside down and start at the bottom and you could press and lift up. It's going to react different on paper, of course. But see how you can because they're a little thick for the paper. Look at that fine line that you can do. I mean, it's amazing what you little leaves, uh, seaweed, there's all kinds of, the ribbon, you know, um, start your ribbon. Okay, so there's all kinds of things that you can do with that trio. If you haven't tried one and you're looking for something to add to your brush collection, that's a it's a very unique brush. And you can, like I said, you can do poinsettia, you can do sunflower petals, poinsettia petals. I mean, there's all kinds of different flowers and things that you can do. Um, all right, what are we going to do to our last one? I want to use this. Um, I think I'll sumi shade it with a different color. We've got the blues. Uh -huh. Let's do uh, 31 and 32 got enough. So 31 is Cabernet and 132 is Deep Cranberry. That at least you can see something different. Water load, drag out to a point, tip into the lighter color. I'm going to tuck that light color up at the end. And I know I got too much water in my brush. 
walk it to the right, walk it to the left, and then you can walk it back the piece or the section that you're working on. I'm going to do the whole thing. So if you only have the Sumi brushes, you can still do butterflies, is what I'm trying to show you. You don't have to have them. You can do, you can do a lot with the Sumi brushes. I do probably 85% of my painting on ceramics with the Sumis. And as you take care of them, don't leave them in the water, don't stand them up to dry, leave them flat to dry. They will last you a long time, just like anything, shoes, whatever you buy, as long as you take care of it, it will, it will last. Now I did get outside the line here so I can shimmy and push that back. When you're doing that, be sure and wipe off what's on your brush because if you don't, you're just moving it around. You're not removing it. And I don't really have to. I mean, you're going to outline, so it doesn't make a difference, but just to show you that it can be done. All right, so I'm going to water load, drag off to a point, blot on the paper towel. I'm going to tip into the deep cranberry, and I'm going to tuck it to the center and then bring it back and overlap into that other color. Once again, if you have trouble with it lifting your color off, you can put the lighter pink or your whatever your lighter color is back in your brush and then do the same Sumi shading with it. Keep fussing with it till you get it like you want it. Not happy with that one. I'm going to add a little bit more. Time I get all the detail on there, it'll be fine. So don't get real critical with that. All right, let's move this back a little bit see everything. All right, so um, we need to do red on this guy. So I'm going to still water load, drag off to a point, blot, I'm going to tip into that 112 candy apple red and I'm going to add that. Water is your friend, as long as you don't overdo it. Use the largest brush possible in the area. So if you find that you're getting um, lots of spottiness, uh, that's the right word, but where you're getting blotches, then you could go to the medium sumi instead. Okay. All right, so as far as the detailing, if you need to take your marker and uh, refresh your memory, you can dot with a marker and say, don't forget, there's where my wings are, okay, so that you've got some type of indication if you have a trouble, you know, just finding where you're going from, going to, okay, I'm going to wipe out the center. Now, if you wanted to lift these off the surface, so to speak, um, by shading behind them, um, a neutral color would be the 103 vellum gray. Okay, 103. We'll do a couple of them, see what you think. Right. 
and then I would go back to that square shader, the number eight, natural hair square shader, water load, drag off both sides. So I'm flipping it over on the flat side, flipping it over, dragging the brush towards me, corner. So water is my carrier this time. Blend that in really well. And then I'm doing this before I outline because I don't want that to interfere or I don't want to pick up any black. So you can come in here and just shade behind. And because I have that white on there, I can soften. So you can do it with the square. You could do it with the sumi. I would go to the medium sumi though, if I were gonna use the sumi. Water load in clean water, drag off to a point, tip into that gray, start in the middle of the area, remember. So if you don't have the square shader, And this being greenware, it just really uh, absorbs the moisture. So I had to go back and get more water. So if you didn't have a square shader, you could just do it with the Sumi brush. And you can keep messing with it, so to speak. So I just have water in the brush right now. I'm going to grab a little bit of the gray through right there. I'm going to blot, blot the water. So you've got two different looks, uh, but you can achieve the same end game with it, in other words. Okay, so I'm just going to leave just that one. I'm not going to do any of the others, but I think you can see how it, maybe I should do this one up here to make it um, kind of even out the design. And I'm pushing all the way down on the bristles, so that, and I'm just kind of bouncing it along and I'm working it back and forth until I get it blended like I want it. Okay. All right. So you can lift it off, meaning make it look like it's lifting off the piece. Okay, all right, let's go to our black. CC 101, cobalt black. Shake. And you're going to see how even though it looks, they look pointed or rounded or squared off, you can adapt and change that based upon how you outline it. So don't let that restrict you. Be uh, what we used to call back in back home in Missouri. My grandma called it loosey goosey. So I've got my 3600 number two liner and a little bit of water, thin one corner of that black. Work it through there, really pull it. So I'm pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, coating those hairs. Just like when you wash your hair, you put shampoo on, you coat the hairs. So imagine that as shampoo and we're coating it. Okay. All right. So on this guy here, I'm just going to kind of outline that area. And I tend to do the same thing on both sides just to keep myself even. And remember, color, pressure, and motion. So the more pressure, I get a fatter line. Now, see that one's fatter than that one. So what do you do? You go back over here and you add a little bit of thickness. 
somewhere to even it out so that your eye is not drawn to that one spot. Okay. So I'm just going to loosey goosey it, come around the edge, not being really particular, giving it just a little bit of a wave. Okay. Go ahead and do the outside here. If you want to stay with it, you can. Now you see how that gray makes it look like it's shadowed and behind. Okay, so there's a stroke called the hat pin stroke that looks really cool on some of these. Still with the same liner, you're going to pull a line and then sit and lift. So pull a line, sit and lift straight up. If you don't have enough product on your brush, you can't get that little tip. Pull, sit and lift. Okay, you can curve it and do the same so it doesn't matter where you're going okay so practice that before you go to your piece if you're uncomfortable with it and let's just put one in here on each one of those areas we can still go back and put some more fine lines Oops. Okay. And then if you want, you can pull additional fine lines. If you watched me use the comb brush um, in one of the other videos, you could even use the comb brush to add detail to these. And then you can, I'm going to lay it down now and then move these because I keep touching the tile on that and I'm afraid I'm going to break it. Okay, so you've got that back loaded so you can come out here and do that little pressure stroke. Let's come in closer. Okay, so I might do some like that. It, I also do this stroke, this pressure stroke for watermelon seeds. Isn't that pretty? You can dress, I mean simple, but you can dress it up. So all we did was base coat with two coats, we used that trio brush, and then we're adding some black. So it really depends on how you can make dots if you didn't want to do this. You could just do little dots with your stylus, your um, dotting tool, or the end of a paintbrush handle if you had one small enough for the area you're working in. Okay, see how pretty that makes it? Just simple, but elegant. Okay, so we're going to go over here. So just do the same thing on both sides, whatever you're doing now. You don't have to do the exact same number of strokes. Because I never do two things alike. So I'm not even going to look at it, but it is a way to... If you're really picky or if you transferred a pattern 
you could do that. But like I said, I, I just wing it. Ha ha ha. Wing. Butterfly. Wings. Did you guys get that? That was my attempt at a joke. Okay. Now, the um, body and the head, same brush, press, pull, pull, lift, 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 lift to a point. More pressure, larger stroke. Turn it around because we're going to do one of those little pressure strokes, but it, my point is down towards the body. And I'm going to press and lift. I'm going to do a couple of them there because he's a big guy. Okay. And then you can pull in your little antennae. And you can do one of those at the ends. Sweet. See? Pattern is a guide. You notice I went longer. Press and lift. Since I'm doing those, I'm going to go ahead and, and do all of these. So see how this one went into the middle? I don't care. It doesn't matter because my body is going to connect all that together. Nice and slow. Touch, press, and lift. He's a little fatter too, so I'm going to put two of those there together. Whoops, a little off. So I'm just going to go back in and just make it slightly larger and catch the edge of that. Okay, so press, pull, lift, lift, lift start to run out of color. And as you're lifting, I need to thin some more down is what the problem is. Kind of slightly like a quarter of a turn between your fingers and that will gather all those hairs up and bring it back to its tail for you. So you can get that nice point. Turn, start to run out of color. And as you're lifting, press, then lift. Some more for you so you can get that nice point turn sorry to run out of color and as you're lifting this one down press there, and lift and if they're larger than the brush size you. you have you may have to do so you can get that nice point, point two stroke we'll turn see. press and out. fan it out fan it out pull 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 lift lift yeah it was off just by a hair that's okay i can just put a fine line there And I am going to do a couple strokes there. All right. So press, pull, and lift. him a big body for a little wings. Set and lift, set and lift. And I'm going to adjust my antennae based upon my head that I created. I'm going to set this down. So we're going to press, pull, lift, lift, lift to a point. You can curve the body if you want. You don't have to go straight. It's just the way that I've always done it. Sometimes 
happens when I talk and I can't do the stroke at the same time. Okay, so there's all of our bodies in. So now we can go back. I'm going to thin this down again. I don't thin the whole puddle, just one side, because it's going to evaporate before I ever get it done. All right, so on this guy, we use the square. So if we want, I'm going to kind of go thick and thin and make it fancy. So see, just by changing how much pressure you put down, you can uh, create a different look. Okay, so even though that was a square shader, you now have more rounded look to it. So it all depends on how you outline. Let's put some of these colors up so I don't have to fight uh, using them. I end up breaking my piece. I don't. Okay, so I want those fine lines. I'm just up on the tippy toe. And I can pull some lines out. Make them different lengths. Just keep overlapping. We can still add other things out here. But I want to get that in there first. Okay. You can put little, you know, if you want little feet on them, you can do little L shapes. I guess that's the only two I needed on. And then if you want to do, once again, some of those little uh, pressure strokes, or um, you could do, we could start with dots. Um, I like to find the handle of a brush, especially um, on this larger one. So whatever the tip of your brush is, is how large that's going to be. Thin some of the rest of that down. Probably going to have to get more out. And um, when you're doing dots, if you keep dotting, it's going to be what we call graduated dots. They get smaller as you go. If you load for each shot, they will be the same size. So you determine what that's going to be. I need some more black. To really do dots with. I'm just going to grab some water with my handle with a brush and slightly then that and this. So if I wanted like a big little 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 okay and then if I want to go down the other side I don't want a big one I can dot one off on my palette and then go down. So that's how you can achieve that. So if you want one, two, three, four, five, and you want the other side the same, dot one off, one, two, three, four, five. And maybe here you just have those three. So I'm just making this up as I go. Just to show you that it doesn't have to be hard 
got one off. Go the other direction. And looky there. You've got a simple, beautiful butterfly. You can keep going or you can stop. You know me. It's hard for me to stop. What am I thinking? Um, hmm. No. Just one. There you go. Isn't that pretty? So I'm trying to show you different ways of doing things so that you use what you've got as far as your brushes, how to accomplish something. We also have that um, wipeout tool that has the um, point, like the looks like a kiss point. Um, you can make dots with that too because it has a nice fine end also. All right, let's do this guy here. And most of the time I'm bringing my strokes toward me as far as my outlining. And I'm not being real critical as far as the exact outline. See, I'm just kind of waving it. That way I don't have to be perfect. Okay, now, did you see what I just did there? I got a thick line. So my eye is drawn to that. So what are you going to do? You're going to thicken these other ones. Just so that it looks similar. Okay. When you do your fine lines, you're just up on your tippy toe. I call it up the tip of that brush. It's just dragging across there. Different lengths. So, on this one, maybe I want red dots. So I can come back over to my uh, 112 red, and maybe we do them with this tool because it's a smaller butterfly, first of all. And that will allow you to keep that um, nice and small because that handle would not have fit in this one for sure. Now you could do the handle for a larger way if you want. That. And then you could go back to the little tool. Um, 
if I got something right there that just won't accept the black. It's like a bump. There we go. Uh, we could put orange ones on there too if you want those. Um, just add a orange in between. I mean, you can just keep going as much as you want to go, you know. And I'm going to put one there and there to kind of finalize that. Hmm. I'll leave it simple. I tend to go overboard. You guys can run with it and add and don't add. I mean, just make it yours. Okay. Now, this one had, so if you needed to, you can't see the wing. That one had a back wing and then the two. So I just dotted with them. So, so now watch this. I'm not even going to pay attention to the red. I'm creating my own. Okay. Um, you could go and you could put, you know, we had orange and red on that one. We could come in and put red lines, but that would intensify the red because you're adding another layer to it. So it's going to darken it. And then you could come in with the black. Whoops, got a little heavy handed there. Oh, that's not good. That's okay. And once again, you could do your little Pressure strokes. Okay. I mean, you could scratch off if you wanted, uh, you know, if you didn't like what you got on there and you didn't stay inside your lines. I'm not going to worry about it. So just determine if you're going to wave it, if you're going to restrict yourself to exactly the pattern. Fine little lines. Sometimes it's hard for me to talk at the same time as doing those. Okay. So the one I just made a little tail on it. So you can come out at the point. Okay, so on that one, if you wanted um, this was the deep cerulean was our dark color. 
So we can add those dots. So depending on how big or small your area is, that will determine what size uh, tool you use for your dots. If you're on a little one, you need to use that smaller uh, wipeout tool. And then we can come down the side too. I kind of let it talk to me and I just go with the flow and let it tell me what it needs as I'm looking at it. Fine little lines. You can even come in um, with some white dots. If you're going to do that because you've got some bright colors underneath it, I would definitely use your white color stroke. One. The CS Seco 2. And maybe add some of those. I'm going to add it with the little kiss tool only because. I'm going to add it right on top of that black on the larger. I'm loading for each one. See how that changes it? Kind of cool. So that's the same white that we put on to begin with. Now, if I want. larger dots. I went back to the paintbrush handle. So you can keep playing with it and adding and doing all kinds of things. Let's add um, some white on this. Dress it up. You can also take go back to the um, cranberry, which is what we did the darker on this one, and you can do the cranberry dots. Now, because we are on um, greenware. We could scratch a highlight on the body, or you could add white um, to it with a brush if you wanted. I've got the Diamond Core tool. This is the L3. And I'm going to use the small end. And I'm just off to one side. I'm just going to highlight. Stick my hand in something wet. But it can be done with the white paint. Or you could use um, a wire loop, you could use a needle tool. I mean, whatever you've got. Toothpick might even work. That just kind of adds. It's like adding a, a little glimmer. So 
to it. Now this one I need I see some blue underneath, so I'm gonna scratch through that blue. I don't want it standing out. Okay. What do you think? You like it? Hopefully that gives you some ideas. Um, you can continue to dress up the tile if you wanted. You could. Um, I feel like I want to do something to the corners, but my corners are not even, so. Um, Yeah, probably the round. Remember, uh, 4KB. And I think I'll just do it with black just because that goes with everything that we've got on here. And I'm just going to do some comma strokes in the corners. So just to press, pull, lift. Press, pull, lift. And then you can add a dot be able to add too many over there. There you go. I think I'm done. Other than sign, you can sign on the back. Um, you could sign a color on the corner. Um, I am going to just use the black. This is the 3600 number two. I can see what you do with these tips and tricks that I've shown you tonight. I look forward to seeing your butterflies on your pieces. Post, tag me, and share your share your work. All right, guys. Okay, guys. So, what'd you think? You liked it? Looks like you did. All right. So, there was a question, um, Lori from Canada. It's ceramic, so I'm putting two coats of glaze on the tile, and then I'll fire it again. Okay. Then we had another question on. Hold on, you guys are popping them all in there, and I'm losing track of them. The trio brush, uh, TJ. I used uh, the orange, the Florida orange, and then I laid one side in the candy apple red. And you can always go back to that spot and watch that again. Okay, I'm trying to read comments. Um, do you sell the tiles and the bisque shapes? I do. I can. Yeah. Um, I have a gal that pours for me locally and uh, I'm teaching a class in a couple of weeks in Tulsa and this happened to be one of the tiles so I just used it for the demo. What about the leftover palette? Uh, Barbie asked on YouTube. You know it's up to you if you've only had one color in there and it doesn't seem you can put yours back in 
your bottles I don't that's just you know and when I'm teaching I everybody's like don't you want this back no because it's contaminated once you guys because I don't know what your brushes have been but if you take care of your brushes and you are really good about cleaning and everything and you want to put some of that back in your bottle it's your bottle you can do that okay just be careful since this was greenware do you biscuit uh, Barbie yes I took it to bis so that's I haven't glazed it yet okay so that's the um, let me go overhead here so you can see so this is bisque and I've got my phone here trying to answer questions so yeah this is still just bisque this is a um, poured tile uh, this particular one is made by Holland mold um, I would have to look I think that um, the guy out of Wichita Kansas uh, has the molds for them, but you can just do a Google search. This is an 8 by 8 tile, so I will clear glaze it, stilt it, and fire it, because um, I'm going to put it in when I do the mugs also, and um, and fire it up. Okay. So let's go back here. Um, I now have a big space in my account. Okay. So... I'm trying to read all the questions uh, I am by myself so did you like this format where it was a video and then I can immediately respond other than I'm answering on Facebook and YouTube so it takes me a minute to go back and forth I got one on the computer one on my phone um, I know uh, Stacy said she really liked seeing the colors pop up or the brushes and everything and I can do that um, that's too much work to do on a live um, because you have to add each one of those things so it's something that I can record I can edit put those up and then it helps you guys uh, in the end oh Lori <laughs> she sold her boat so now she has space for a kiln cool I sell kilns also so let me know um, Teresa says she loved it um, you're welcome and smart way to teach Barbie said well it's um, you know I did it one other time and Jenny was helping me this allows me to do these myself and I don't have to tie Jenny up um, you know take away two hours of her time every Tuesday evening so it allows me to be able to do it myself so I will try to do more of these it does take more work and more days because you're recording one day and then you're editing and um, it took me probably five hours to do the editing and put all the verbiage in there for you so you couldn't understand how I could answer and paint at the same time that's because it was recorded you missed the beginning so um, what I do is I record it I do all the editing I put it up as an unlisted video on YouTube and then I go to that URL and start the video and it works so pretty cool um, this system that I'm using works really nice okay I'm glad you liked it lots of different brushes lots of different ways to accomplish the same thing so if you don't have the money to buy you know every single brush which I did list all the brushes on the PDF so go to the search bar or the blog and I think I put it under brush strokes ceramics and glass as far as the blog goes but you can just type in butterfly in the search bar and you'll find it if you want a different kind of butterfly when I did my butterfly ornament last November um, it's out there and there's a PDF and it shows you a different butterfly so and then I did a clay share butterfly what a year ago so when you type in butterfly in the search bar on the website it'll bring up everything that has the word butterfly in it and then you can scroll down and pick it and go back and forth and find those things and find what uh, what you want to look at okay all right so um, check out the things I posted earlier if you're glass and uh, I posted the hydrangea and pansy piece that's out of the kiln uh, that Miss Robin Storm has commissioned and it turned out fantastic I, I got to make me one now because I, I just I love it or I just don't give her that one one or the other right so be sure and like share and uh, tag me if you share you'll get in the drawing for next week I'm giving away that butterfly tile that I painted and I'm also going to give away um, what did I write down 
a packet, a free Technique packet, and I'm going to give away the liner, the 3600 number 2 liner. Okay. Um, one of the questions uh, that, or a subject that I talked about, and I'm going to go to my overhead here real quick. So this is NCR paper. I was talking about clay carbon paper. Okay. So you can use this, and this is, can you tell it's old? Um, but I wanted to show you this. So it's carbonless. So it's NCR paper. It's like those carbonless um, receipt books that you can get at the office supply places. And it has a right and a wrong side. And I've had this all forever. But can you see the mark that it made? Okay. So you would put this down, put your pattern on top, and then you can take and use a pencil or a pen and it will transfer your pattern i think you can kind of see that gray and that burns off so that is another way to do it you do need to keep that in a cool damp cool and dry i'm trying to talk too fast space so that so i keep this in a closed cabinet i don't keep it where light can get to it and um that's lasted me absolutely forever okay all right you like the way this one worked okay then I will try to do, the, it takes a little more time, so bear with me. I may not be able to do it every time. So um, be sure and send me suggestions of what you want to see next. And uh, I did send out some invitations. If you haven't liked the Colors for Earth page on Facebook, be sure and like that because I may switch over and do the lives on my business page versus my personal page. Um, so be sure and um, go out there and like that page, okay? All right, guys, have a good evening.